Through hiker Skywalker here, and I'm at the Wolf's Rocks Trail, and I'm going to take it today. Uh, it's supposed to rain. I don't know. I know this ridiculous setup, the headband, and this stuff is all because it works. It's not because I want to look pretty out here. This is a nice little trail, the Wolf's Rocks Trail, and I've. It's something I've done so many times I can't even count. I love it because right now my legs have been bothering me all week, and this. This is a nice warm up. It's like going to the gym. This this trail is like three miles each way, I believe. And um, there's loops, there's all different things. There's easy ways, there's hard ways. What I love about it the most is this because I'm out here and I'm gonna show you exactly what like when you first start out. It's very, very uh, calm and easy going. You have some of these cinnamon ferns like up ahead here. And uh, it's very rocky, yeah, but not too bad. That's the first part of it. We're calling for rain and it is kind of starting to rain. This is just not even a few feet away from where I was at. You can always tell it's going to rain because the trees, the leaves will turn upside down. And here comes the rain. But uh, this spot here, where I saw the bear the one time. This is going to be a little shower. This is why the bears love it here. All these blackberries. These are more of a ground berry. I assume he's been through here. It's a good food source. This is an old cut uh, the gas well goes through. This point on, and I've seen it, there's a lot of water because of the bog above it this all turns into all laurel and uh, wild rhododendron this is where a bear hides out, this is where he lives at I should get my rain hat on, what do you think? it's not as rocky here, it's more smooth All these weird mushrooms, like this. <laughs> they say you tell mountain laurel from rhododendron. Mountain laurel is nice and small. Rhododendron is a lot bigger, a bigger leaf. This second area is very boggy, and usually this is all. These are all pools of water and you have to walk around them and the humidity is bad, mosquitoes are bad. But it's been a dry summer so I can just walk right through it. All that mud makes for soft ground to walk on. Just take a moment here. I appreciate this mountain laurel and rhododendron forest. The ecosystem that it is. So what do you have? Here's some birds. You can see the mountain laurel is really thick, there's rocks, and you know, you're, if any an animal you encounter, it's going to be right there, you're not going to have a chance to react. That's one layer. Second layer, you have these smaller trees, like this here, which is like a uh, ironwood. And then the last layer, the top layer, you have some, what do we see, maple, some cherry, and most of all, the white spruce. The story behind these white spruce, what makes them so amazing. And one time hemlock was, these were, this area was where the king would get the materials for his ship mass. See, they're a very sturdy tree. They're the top tree up here, because the hemlocks are all grown. It was very humid here. And uh, that's why animals like the bears and the deer love it in here, turkeys. Uh, in the same sense, you're walking along, you come upon them without knowing it. It can be an interesting encounter. That happened to me a couple of times. Um, makes you wonder what this was like back before they forested it, when it was all those big giant hemlock trees and this laurel. This would have been much darker.
sassafras tree right here, all this ironwood. Makes it very clear that this is the second tier of the forest. After you get past the uh, mountain laurel, you get to this area. This is where all the paths intertwine. All this cat thorn that uh, it really limits, like when trees grow, you see how it grows onto other plants and uh, climbs up them and they, the trees can't even grow. So this was a wasteland for a long time. There's a lot of, the only thing that really has lasted here are these beech trees, like this one. You're going to get into leaving the laurel and get into the beech forest. So you come to this five-way, and uh, it's the Hobble Bush Trail. This is the Wolf's Rocks Loop. Either one of these will take you to it. This one goes off. It's the Baker Eady Road, the original road that went over the mountain. And uh, the melons own most of that, uh, so you really doesn't do you any good to go back there. But you can even walk that way. And the, uh, you get to the ed end, we'll tell you that it's private property. There's a left there you can make that goes to the bobcat trail. The beech trees, and I saw a lot of these up in Clarion. Some of those big, massive, old-growth trees. That's what this would have been at one time. And that's all that's left is the children of them. The beech trees make nice little roots for you to walk on. Uh, You'll see some wild birch as well. They've got pretty neat roots. In a beech forest, beech is a hardwood tree, but it's also the, you can eat the nut from it. It's like a uh, chestnut. So in the fall, you see a lot of smaller wildlife like squirrels and chipmunks here. This is basically a second growth forest. And it's going to take about two, three hundred years for it to ever get back to what it originally was. Some of these things, like this cherry tree here, gives you a little bit of an indicator of uh, how quickly some of them grow. The trees like your hemlocks to be three, four feet wide, it's going to take three, four hundred years. I get upset when I see people writing on beech trees, and uh, it wasn't until I got up to Clarion that I really thought about that some of them on the 1920s, and they're like the paper of the earth, they're like poems, poetry that's written, a beautiful love poem, and, and I remember my father telling me when he was a kid, he used to eat the beech nuts, and he made beech nut gum, of course, from that, uh, but you, you leave the beech nut first. You're in the second bog. And these are all oak. They don't grow as fast. And these are all cinnamon ferns. When you're in the, the cinnamon ferns, there's really not a lot for the animals to eat. So, see these little cinnamon ferns. You could be walking and find a piece of slate, and pop it open, and see the same kind of fern two, three hundred million years ago that grew here. So, uh, you're really in an ancient area. You get the feel for it. I should get past that come to vast areas that never will grow back. I'm going to cut them, all these trees. We're looking at trees sometimes, five, six, seven, sometimes 800 years old. And uh, they didn't realize that it doesn't all grow back within a certain amount of time. It just takes centuries. And this is what we're left with. Um, Places like that. You can see for miles. 
It's not so much sad. I mean, the men who did it were earning a paycheck. You walk into this third tier of it, you start to really get an appreciation of the second side of the forest that's all like maple and oak. It's grown back somewhat. You get that sense that these men had the best of intentions and they were earning a paycheck, of course. They named half these places. She really get a feel for what was lost as far as being, be it a man that's out in the woods fishing, hunting. Uh, one time this must have been amazing game lands. All the wildlife died off. These trees are making a comeback. As long as people give them a chance to grow, you're going to start seeing some things like these big white oaks. This is about 90 years old, so it's about the same age as when it was cut. This is probably one of the first ones. These maples and other trees. There are areas off this trail here that are kind of amazing. I always imagine this as being a place some little gnome would live, like, I don't know, David the Gnome or something. <laughs> Those little jeebies out there that Joe Root used to talk about. Such a neat little area. Nice little rock shelter. Somebody must have built a fire and didn't realize that sandstone shatters. But, uh, it's a nice little area. I can imagine, you know, camping out, putting a little tent in there, I don't know. <laughs> so you walk through a lot of other trees and you get to this part, it's like the end. Um, very rocky. It's hard to believe that you spend all winter, like at least four months out of the year, because all these roads up here aren't maintained. And uh, especially if you have a bad winter, you're never going to get up here. There's a little fire pit over there, and that part. But now it's like 95 degrees today, humidity is like. 80%. Practically, you don't need a water bottle. Just walk with your mouth up when you get all the water you want. <laughs> this, this makes it all worth it. This is the uh, Wolf's Rocks overlook. And it overlooks the valley that Lynn Run Road goes up through and up through Ligonier. I'm always very cautious. There are a lot of rattlesnakes out here. So when you do come out, be very careful and mindful of that. Be respectful. Don't go near them. Don't bother them. You see a lot of glaciated rock like this right here where the glaciers went over. It's a lot cooler here now. You can see it's rained and a lot of trees coming. Well, it's the clouds coming this way. She's got trees. Um, beautiful day. Beautiful day to be out here. I might come up here on a day like this.
today when it's hot. You get the nice cool breeze that's hitting you. You ever look at that valley? It's like, yeah. You can see like right now the this clouds coming across. The sun is just you can see the outline just moving right across it. I love that. This is my place to kind of just think up some things. And uh, like I said, I've ever named it Wolf's Rock, said they uh, I don't know what the reasoning was, but it's a beautiful spot. Go down the valley that way. Lake in here. This is the whole road it runs up through, Lynn Run. Over there in that ridge you have the Grove Run Trail. Here's the old railroad trail. Going up through there and there's a trail that runs the whole back of that. Clear up through. Not much grows up here, a lot of birch. Uh, a lot of oak. Some ash trees, of course. I really wanted to talk about the Wolf's Rock Trail rather than do as other people have done and talk about themselves. And, uh, just get a feel for what's like walking it, what's like living it. That's what you're doing. You're not walking a trail. You're living it. You're taking it all in, and you're 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 being becoming a part of that. You know. I love that part about nature. Where you really can't define yourself from it, and that's what it has to teach you.